everybody, my name is Larissa and I am the marketing director for the Real Estate Muses. Today I'm here with Meredith Alvarez from Bell Floor. Hi. Um, and she's going to give us a tutorial on how to put together a fall floral arrangement. So Meredith, tell us a little bit about Bell Floor and how you make the magic happen. Yes. Well, first of all, thank you so much, Larissa, yes. and the, to the Real Estate Muses for inviting me to be a part of this. Yes. Uh, you guys are amazing and we love what we're, you're doing you. in the community. Um, yes, I am Meredith, uh, the owner and creative designer of Bell Floor. Mm -hmm. um, we are a subscription-based florist here in San Antonio. Nice. Um, now, before everybody thinks subscription only, it's how we started. Mm -hmm. um, we are a full functioning floral company. We do events, we do special delivery, single orders. We mm -hmm. also have our subscription model. Nice. Uh, our difference is that we're not a retail space. We mm -hmm. actually are studio based and every single arrangement is built to order. So it allows the flower to stay fresher. It allows your arrangement to stay fresh. Um, we don't have just uh, vases lying around for you to purchase off the street. Right. Everything is built to order. Cool. So that's a little bit about yeah. Bell Floor. They're all one of a kind. They are. Every single one is made to order. I love it. Um, and so today, uh, we're going to give you a very, very quick tutorial on DIY flower arranging. Um, so we have this lovely petite vase. Yeah. Um, we've put together an array of lovely fall colors for you. Um, we've got some ginger, some mums, some pin cushions, some spray roses. Um, and the three kind of really quick keys to floral arranging okay. are color, texture, mm -hmm. and shape. Um, the color, you want to make sure that you're kind of getting a nice array within the same palette. We like yeah. to do a mix of muteds and brights, as you can see here. We got mm -hmm. our brights with the pin cushions and our more muted with the sprays. Texture, um, you always want to have something that's got a little bit of a different texture. Yeah. So you want something like a rose with that softness and something like a pin cushion with a spikiness. You also have these lovely fillers, wax flower, safflower, balm, um, button mums that are just going to add little pops of mm -hmm. visual interest in your arrangement. Yeah. And then the last key component is your shape. And the shape is really dictated by the vase, but you mm -hmm. just want to make sure a lot of times you'll see arrangements tend to get a little bally. You yeah. want to have a little bit more weight, what we like to call the S shape or a valley, so mm -hmm. that you have some height, some lower, um, and that's kind of the key. Um, okay. The other main component is to have fun. You never want to get stressed out. Things can always be removed out of the vase. They can always put back in. You just mix it up. Get your creative vibe. Put some music on. Have yeah. a glass of wine while you're doing it. Yes. Sometimes we don't do that during the day, but definitely at night. <laughs> uh, so that being said, let's get started. Yeah, let's do it. The key to floral arranging for me is you mm -hmm. actually want to take the biggest head flower first. And place that in. Place that in. Because that's going to take up the most real estate in your vase yes. um, and so you want to make sure that you're not cramming that in at the end so for us that is going to be our ball mum and our pin cushion you see how yeah. big these the heads of these flowers are so i start and always another rule of thumb to keep in mind you can always recut a stem you can't add it back on once you've yeah. cut it so, so i use when you're exactly i use the table to kind of get an idea we give it one cut and then you just see where you are see the height above the lip of your vase that's still a little tall for my liking so we're going to go about there. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other key component, and thank you for helping yeah. me clear, you never want leaves below the waterline. It just adds to bacteria. So you want to make sure any part of the stem that's going to be below your waterline, and we're helping with a glass vase here, you remove that um, leaf. Now, you don't want to remove too many of the leaves. It really helps the flower get water mm -hmm. once it's in the vase. Yeah. And then another key component is always cut your uh, stem at a 45 degree angle. And here's why. Once you enter it into the vase, it won't be flush against the bottom. So the flower will continuously get water mm -hmm. and it will last longer because yeah. we always want our flower arrangements to last as long as possible. Yes, for sure. um, so then second, we're going to add this lovely pin cushion in here. And this one, so I'm actually going to want this pin cushion to be a little bit taller. So what I'm going to do is pop him in here and then go back and just ever so slightly. No, yeah, I'm going to ever so slightly, like literally just take the tiniest little bit off of the mom. Make it just a little bit lower. Exactly. So they Pretty. kind of hang up against each other. Give a little kiss. Mwah. Then um, the next is our linear flower here, our ginger. Linear flowers, we normally work in rule of, of two. Okay. Um, linear flowers like tulips, irises, mm -hmm. anything that's just long and skinny. Yeah. We normally like to skew them so that you'd be taking them and almost making sure that they're different heights like mm -hmm. that. Two is too many, this will overwhelm this face. So we're just gonna do one for a smaller arrangement, but a uh, good rule of thumb is normally work in twos. And I'm actually gonna leave the ginger leaf. Now here, the thing is, flowers have a natural order. You can see this guy wants to bend, so that's easy. We're just gonna take the pin cushion and pop him over on the other side. 
in the back. Oop, well, little shedding of the leaf. And he's a little tall now that we've fixed that ginger. So now to fill out the vase, I'm going to add one more mum. And you'll see how much that adds. We're going to keep him taller in the back here. And that's going to kind of be, you don't want to overwhelm the vase. So this is going to be the main. These are the showstoppers. Exactly. These are kind yeah. of the showstoppers. These are where we really need to build. And you can see, again, he's a little too tall, so just trim again. Perfect. Tuck that lovely leaf back. Now, as we kind of lift it up, you'll see that we started to kind of create a little bit of that S shape. Yeah. We're going to add some of the smaller headed flowers now, which will be our spray roses. Give him a little trim. Again, removing any leaf that's going to be underwater. Be careful with the thorns. <laughs> and we're going to add one. I'm going to trim him up just a little more. You're going to see a lovely little thick. What I love about spray roses is the varying stems. Mm -hmm. It actually allows you to really work within the vase and kind of angle them. So you can see as I enter this one in, we're going to kind of smooth Spreading some around. Yeah. Goes from that way. This leaf just really wants to be front and center. <laughs> You're not the showstopper. You got to be in the back there. All right. And we're going to add one more spray on the taller side back here. And actually, this will help. Um, sometimes I... <laughs> I use one flower to make another flower behave. Stay in place. Exactly. Yeah. So this spray rose, you'll see we're going to just move this leaf out of the way because it's wanting to naturally curl. Put a spray rose right in front of it, a little too tall. Makes it stay in line. And it's going to just force it to do what I want it to do. <laughs> there you go. There we go. And so now you can see we've got a lovely color palette going. Gonna judge this guy around here. And then all we're gonna really do is add some some greenery and some lovely um, filler and a little bit of drama in the front here to continue this S shape. I'm gonna do that with some seeded eucalyptus that we have here. Eucalyptus, uh, greenery is key. Flowers are, you know, every flower has a greenery on it. So you're always gonna wanna include some greenery. Um, we love eucalyptus. We love um, amaranthus. They're great um, hanging options for your greenery. We tend to love to use these because, again, it creates more of that visual S shape that we're going for. So we're going to take this guy and just tuck him right in, and you'll see how he drapes. And that drape is kind of what we're going for. So pretty. Um, and the other thing we love about eucalyptus is, again, it comes on such long stems that you can kind of pick and choose how big, big and you dense it. your stem is going to yeah. be. So we're going to, I'm just going to add a little bit more right here in this hole. Another thing with flowers, you always kind of want to get down on its level. Or <laughs> hold the vase up get so that you can see it forming. It. Exactly. Um, and if this leaf just continues to not do what I want, you know what we do? Just remove it and add other greenery. Yeah. So because he's not happy, I'm going to do that. Pop that green off. Ginger can be fickle. And last, and now, I know, aren't they lovely? Um, we'll add a nice little pop of green in the back. And actually, I'm going to accomplish that with this lovely stem that we have here. And again, bell floor greenery, we just love lots of greens on stems. So we're going to take this guy, pop him in the back where that greenery wasn't functioning this greenery is going to function. There we go. Yeah. So you can see add a little interest there. We've got the beautiful seeded eucalyptus. And then I'm actually going to add another pin. It needs a little bit more red. Oh, yeah. Pin cushions are just such fun, interesting flowers. This is a type of a protea. Mm -hmm. um, so they're very happy in the heat. Um, they don't need, they'll, they'll, these are, their longevity is amazing on these. These will last you a really long time. I tend to like to bunch them together. So you see how there's a natural hole forming yeah. here. I'm just going to pop this pin cushion in right there. And then lastly, we're just going to start to add some of our fun um, filler, which is going to tie a lot of these colors in. So we're going to get some of this beautiful variegated wax flower that we have. It comes in all of the fall colors. So you've got fun. rust. You've got all of these beautiful. Let me pull a big branch of it out here. And flowers are a messy business. Please don't. <laughs> don't do this wearing like a lot of white. Just know you're going to get dirty and your table's going to get dirty. 
Um, but just add little pops of your uh, filler. And also your t this this gains your texture, your color. This kind of allows the, the it rounds out yeah. the arrangement to a point where you've got just lots of beautiful little pops of varying flower color. Put one little one in there. And how pretty. Thank you. It's coming together. And also, do you know, you know, just as we we're we have a wonderful uh, team here, and I'm sure some of this will be added. Take your time. If you make a mistake, which, you know, I've done pretty much in every arrangement I've ever made, take your time, pull some flowers out, rearrange until you're happy. It's um, part of the fun. It is part of the fun. You just want to be patient. Um, flowers are nature, uh, nature's way of smiling at you, and just smile back. Yeah. Because <laughs> sometimes they can be mean. They don't want to do what you want <laughs> them to do, and they don't go where you want them to go. Um, but just take a breath, pull it out, and put it back in where you want it and it'll work. And then I actually have one final thing. I'm gonna put a little bit back here for you. I'm gonna take a minute when we're done here to just add a little pop of some of our balmums to give it that texture. But one thing that I did wanna show because I kind of created, this is actually our last showstopper. So um, we love to work with orchids. Mm -hmm. Cymbidium orchids are absolutely stunning, but they come on very long stalks. They're so big, And yeah. they're so tall, and they're very difficult to work with in that way. Mm -hmm. So one thing that we like to do is we get what we call these aqua picks. You can actually fill it with water, and then you cut the stem off. This will allow this to last. Cool. And then you can kind of take one of those huge cymbidium orchid stems uh -huh. and create them. And these are the actual showstoppers. So I'm going to put this one in here at the very tail end here. You always want to put these in last because they add such... A different, yeah, see? It oh. completely transforms. And it's so different. And it's fun. different. It's fun. It's hitting something here where it's not going where I want it. There we go. And then it's going to add that lovely little pop of color for you. And with just an extra little zhuzhing that I'll do, we'll get a finished product here for you. But there's your lovely little. It's coming together face. so well. I love it. I love it. So there we go. And I'm going to add some pops. We'll have some photos at the end, I think. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, ultimately have fun, work with your color, your texture, and your shape, and you too can be a floral designer. Well guys, if you liked this tutorial, you need to get in contact with Meredith. One time orders, birthdays, special events, and she also does some really fun classes. So if you're interested in hosting one of these for your family, your friends, your clients, give Meredith a call and she can have fun with you guys too. Thank you, and yes, we, have, uh, we are on Instagram, so please feel free to follow us at BellFloorSA. Uh, or you can visit our website, bell-floor.com, where you can place all of your orders, and we'll be happy to answer any questions about subscriptions, special ordering, and events.